Welcome aboard the Ishikari Liner semi-rapid service train bound for Otaru. After a stay in Sapporo, we took a half-hour train ride north to Otaru, a small port city facing the Ishikari Bay that served as a trading hub up until the mid-1900s. It's now considered a living museum of Japan's past, drawing in tourists looking to escape their busy metropolis life. While it's characterized by a scenic canal, it's also known for amazing seafood, so naturally our first stop was the Sankaku Market. The market is just a short walk from the Otaru train station, but it's extremely narrow with not a lot of stalls, so it wasn't too hard to find this particular restaurant that we wanted to try. However, once we arrived, we were told that the wait time was around 2 hours. At this point, we were pretty traumatized from our experience of waiting in lines for restaurants in Sapporo, so we decided to try to come back the next day when they open at 8am. And given that most tourists come to Otaru just as a day trip, we were hopeful that there wouldn't be a huge line in the morning, and thankfully we were right. The market is famous for its kaisendon, which is a bowl of rice topped with an abundance of fresh locally caught seafood at very affordable prices. You can customize your bowl or choose from one of the pre-selected options. And although Hokkaido is well known for harvesting some of the best sea urchin or uni in the world, uni from the west side of Hokkaido facing the Sea of Japan is actually only in season during the summer, so it wasn't the best time to have uni in Otaru, but still fresher than anything we could get in North America. The first bowl that we ordered had a mountain of scallops, salmon, tuna, sweet shrimp, salmon roe, and uni. And for the second bowl, we went just for the uni and crab. In case you are wondering if the chirashi and kaisendong are the same, the difference lies in the rice and presentation. In a chirashi, the seafood is laid more flatly on a bed of vinegar sushi rice, whereas the kaisendong piles a mound of seafood on plain steamed rice. Every February, lit up snow statues and glowing lanterns are scattered across the city and along the canal for the Otaru Snow Light Path Festival which runs at the same time as the Sapporo Snow Festival that I talked about in my last video. Thousands of candles are lit every night and placed inside decorated jars and ice and snow sculptures, which are handmade by locals and some overseas volunteers. Given the unusually warm winter last year, volunteers had to make new snow sculptures almost every day of the festival as the snow kept melting. And every time a gust of wind blew at one of the candles, a volunteer was standing nearby to light it back on. This is a tradition that has carried on for more than 20 years. The organizers say that the festival is a celebration of the scenic beauty of winter and its community spirit. As we walked through the snow-covered, picturesque town, we were warmed not only by the glow of candles, but also by the love and dedication that went into organizing this event. As random as this might sound for a coastal city, Otaru has a very famous fried chicken shop that's worth checking out. Known for its tender spring chicken, it even delivers across Japan and to China. Ordered their half fried chicken, karage, and a steamed egg, but their expansive menu also has seafood if you're up for that. I thought that the karage was just okay, but the freshly fried chicken was so tender on the inside and the crispy thin skin was hardly even oily. We enjoyed it a lot and we had it a second time on our trip in a different town. Welcome to Mount Tengu. Overlooking Otaru and the Sea of Japan, Mount Tengu offers beautiful panoramic views from the top. The mountain is named after a legendary creature called Tengu, or the Heavenly Dog, which takes the form of a human with a very long nose and red face. Some Japanese consider them to be protective spirits that are almost godlike. There is also a small Shinto shrine situated on top of the mountain, 
People come here and pray for success in business and safety from traffic accidents. I would recommend coming here late in the afternoon right before dusk so that you can enjoy both the day and night views from the mountain. Next to the gift shop, you will find a Tengu museum and also a giant Tengu sculpture that is supposed to bring you good luck depending on how you rub the nose. For success in business and safe travels, touch both sides of the nose lightly. For success at school, place both hands on both sides and move forcefully to the top. For the well-being of family members, touch the entire nose three times with each hand in turn. Many people also wrote messages and wishes for themselves and their families back home. Provide some tour information during our descent from Sanrobi Station. Otaru was formerly a point where people and commodities gathered as the front door to the sea, due to the fact that it was also a Another really random discovery we made was the Kame Fish Cake Store. We found it through a magazine I picked up in Sapporo and it was recommended by a local who really enjoyed their fish cake roll. To our surprise, it turned out also to be a fish cake factory, which is definitely not something you see every day. The fish cake roll was quite unique. Instead of having a chewy texture, it was airy on the inside, almost like a croquette, but crispy on the outside. The magazine also recommended going to the top of the clock tower where Latau was originally founded. The observation deck overlooks the historical shopping district. Down below on Sakai Machi Street, we stopped by Sawawa for a treat. We tried their matcha ice cream which came in two levels of intensity and their matcha warabi mochi which was chilled, chewy, and jelly-like. Later in the day, we picked up our rental car to begin our short road trip to Niseko and Lake Toya. As we departed Otaru, we drove along the coastline which bordered Ishikari Bay, set to the backdrop of snow-capped mountains. The view from this drive was unexpectedly beautiful because it wasn't something that I anticipated from having read from a magazine or seen in a photograph or even a video. It was just Mother Nature's way of surprising us in the best way possible. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did. See you next time!